couple of weeks ago, I released a video basically saying that I quit my job at Accenture. And well, as the title suggests, I have a new job offer, which is for double the salary I was getting at Accenture. So maybe you're thinking, Saga, how did you manage to double your salary in the span of just under a year of working as a software engineer? So let me share with you these four steps I did to get this new job offer. So one of the things I did was to work on my own projects outside of work hours. And this is because you want to differentiate yourself from the rest. So imagine that there are, you know, a few hundred software engineers at graduate level at Accenture. So what are you going to do to really differentiate yourself from the other engineers? Because ultimately, if you're going to be working your normal nine to five job and learning how to code just from that, then there's gonna be 99 other people who are doing the same. So you gotta think about it and be like, okay, how do I make myself more valuable and attractive to other companies? And this is basically where I was working on projects outside of work. There are many benefits of working on projects outside of your normal job, which you can expect. And these things include things like being able to explore and learn new technologies, and therefore you are expanding your skill set for future employees employers, should I say. And also you're going to be learning how to solve different types of problems. And this is great because, you know, your value as an engineer increases the more exposure you have to solving different problems. So if you're able to be uh, like to a interviewer saying like, you know, look, I've worked on this project. I've also worked on this project and this is what I had to solve in this one. And this is what I had to solve in this one. They're going to be able to really get a good idea of your ability to solve problems. And also they'll be able to understand that you have had, had experience solving various types of problems that may, they may end up facing in their company. And ultimately, if you do work on your own projects outside of your work, then you're going to get used to sort of making design decisions about the projects you're building and therefore have better understanding of what makes a good design, what makes a bad design. And when I mean design, I'm not just talking about the UI, I'm talking about like whether you'd use a database, you know, what type of database you might want to use, or for example, whether you want to host it on the cloud, whether you don't want to host it on the cloud, what are the best options related to that. And I guess in general, like, you know, how you can best architect a project to ensure that it's suitable for the purpose that you want it to be suitable for. The second thing I did was research the job market. And this is a very important step that I think a lot of people don't necessarily do enough. And this is because you want to be aware of sort of what the salary range, what are the opportunities, and I guess in general, what it's like being a software engineer in other companies outside of the one you're working in. There's a few reasons why this is helpful because, well, you will firstly start to understand what other people are building and what things you might find interesting to work on. And when it comes to understanding what your market value is, you want to have a good understanding of how much other software engineers are being paid at other companies. So then you can sort of like figure out the ballpark, you know, market value rate for someone of your amount of experience and abilities. And therefore you can then approach companies being like, hey, I'm looking for a job that pays X amount of pounds per year. And then this way you're not gonna look like an idiot and be like, you know what? I want 300,000 pounds as a zero year experienced graduate. But you also then don't want to fall onto the other end of the spectrum where you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll do the work for 30,000 pounds. And then you figure out that other people at the company are being paid like 100,000 pounds for doing the exact same amount of work. So you want to be sort of, you know, on the ball of understanding how much you are worth as a software engineer. But how do you do this, you may ask? Well, there are a few things that you can do. The first thing is you can just talk to other engineers in the space. So, you know, I think, you know, it's pretty reasonable to ask, you know, what the ballpark figure of a, someone's salary is. You know, they, obviously they can have the you know, obligation to say, yeah, I'll tell you or no. And, you know, there's no harm in asking, I suppose. And the other ways are if you use websites like levels.fyi, that's one of my favorite ones because that's very transparent and it shows you the salaries of some of the most you know, lucrative companies to work for. And even Glassdoor, Glassdoor is pretty good as well, but I would definitely say levels.fyi is the most accurate in my opinion. 
And you can even just, I suppose, look at job opportunities and job listings because sometimes they do list their salaries. So, you know, you should have a look at them, but sometimes those salaries listed might not be fully accurate. So just, you know, be a bit aware, but definitely levels.fyi I'd say is a good point to start if you don't know any engineer in the space or no one wants to tell you the salary. Great, so now you have built up your skills doing projects outside of work and you sort of understand the market rate of a software engineer of your capability, but how do you get into a company? So you're gonna have to do an application process, you're gonna do interviews and stuff like this, but all of this is actually a skill in itself. And as with all things, you know, you can't succeed at something without having practice. So this is what brings us to tip number three. So tip number three is to apply for lots of roles. And when I mean this, like, yes, I know you're probably thinking of, you know, I want to work in this one particular company and this is the only place I want to work. But why does applying for multiple roles help? Well, you're going you're gonna to get practice at going through application processes and interviews. So you're probably thinking like interviewing at a lot of companies must be a waste of my time and also a waste of the recruiter's time. But I would actually say, no, it's not a waste of your time at all, because what you're doing is you're sort of training yourself you by basically doing multiple interviews to learn how you can improve for the main interview that you want to really succeed in. And you're not really wasting the recruiter's time because they're obviously used to having to you know, take multiple candidates through the application process and so on. And so I think it's in your best interest, really, to just get this practice out the way. And I actually had a friend who told me that some of the people who go straight from university into these top tech careers, they do interviews with companies they don't really have a desire to interview with before they interview with some of the big name tech companies where they have ambitions to work for. And this is purely because they need the practice, you know, you're not going to succeed at something if you've never practiced it. For example, like like sports, you know, you got to train, you got to practice before you compete in the Olympics. Everyone wants to compete in the Olympics, for example, but you're not going to get there and you're not going to succeed even if you do, if you've never practiced a day in your life. Some of you are probably thinking that, you know, interviewing for companies without the intention of working there is a bit ruthless and maybe it is, but you know, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So I use a website called otter.com, O-T-T-A.com to basically find out what these companies are and you know, what companies are hiring software engineers. And because there's so many different companies, especially even here in London that are looking for software engineers, this is a great place to find, you know, qualified companies to interview with. And ultimately, you might find companies that you didn't exist and think are doing an awesome, awesome product. They're building an awesome product and then have the desire to work for them. And in essence, you know, that's basically what happened to me. I didn't know of the company that I'm applying to beforehand. But, you know, once I started to learn who they are, what they do, I was like, holy shit, this is actually a really cool company. And, you know, I would really want to work there. And basically, well, I will be soon. But, you know, not going to give up any of the goodies now. You'll find out in a future video where I'm going to. OK, so the final point I want to make is negotiating your salary. And I by no means am an expert at negotiation. And well, the thing is that helped me the most, I think, when uh, negotiating my salary to get double my current pay is that I understood the market rate of a software engineer and was able to play that to my strengths. Since I knew what other companies are willing to pay me if I was to get an offer from them, you know, this made it easier to really gauge you know, where I sit within the software engineering market. And as a result, I was able to be like, hey, I'm looking for a role which will pay me this much. Are you able to do it? And well, the company that I'm going to did agree. So happy days. And I guess this made the process easier because it wasn't like I was lowballing myself or anything and nor was I commanding a ridiculously high salary which was unjustifiable by myself so I believe that you know having done the proper market research and also interviewing with other companies will help doing this you're going to build a proper picture as to what your value is in the market right now so then you can really explain to the employer why you, you know, are deserving of such a salary and in my case it worked out well so happy days and that's pretty much uh, the story of how I doubled my salary from you know, just having one year's worth of experience after university. 
I hope you found this video useful and also informative and in hoping you grow in your career. So if you found it cool, definitely hit the subscribe button and like the video and also comment down below if you have any other questions or maybe other video ideas that you want me to make because I want to just help you guys out as much as I can. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in another video. Goodbye.